Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today I'm going to talk about how I have my Wi-Fi network set up to not only get outside my driveway, but actually my entire uh, front and backyards is about four acres of coverage. My Wi-Fi consists of a total of six different routers or access points. Uh, five of those are part of the Asus AI mesh system. So there's one main router and then the others are um, wireless nodes and all of your devices will easily switch between it automatically so you always get the best signal and then those routers are spread across four different buildings on the property all the way down from the pond to a back barn um, and it covers all of my backyard as well so i'll go through each one of how it's uh, set up where it's at and how they're connected to have the best connection okay guys so i'm inside my home office now and this is where i have my main router i have my at&t modem so i have um, at&t dsl service here so it's only rated for 25 megabits per second download and about six megabits per second up upload. So not blazing fast, um, but I obviously wanted to keep all of that speed that I could and spread the, um, the Wi-Fi throughout my property to multiple buildings and uh, cover the yard and whatnot. So uh, this is kind of an in-depth video. I'll go through uh, multiple things. One is doing the um, Asus AI mesh um, setup. Another one is how I got uh, Ethernet out to the barn, as well as how I got um, Ethernet over power line to two different uh, nodes, as well as the third method that I get um, the Ethernet um, or the, the internet um, down to the pond, which is using a wireless bridge. So I, I really have three different methods, uh, four if you count uh, wireless. One of my ASUS nodes is actually a uh, it's a five gigahertz wireless backhaul. So I, I kind of have multiple uh, ways to do that. I will break it down for you here uh, to help you out in case you don't want to watch all of it. In the video description down below here, uh, I will put um, a timestamp in there that you can click on to go to each of these sections uh, if you're only interested in one of them. But um, I will also cover the um, ASUS AI mesh system as a whole on what I think of it and uh, if it's better than some of the other um, you know um, mesh systems that you can buy off the shelf okay so let me explain a little bit about uh, why I picked the system I did so uh, in the past I've had just one main router um, and I've used uh, Asus uh, the past few times and I've liked them so this main router is a RTAC88U which is, it's a better router, you know, it's not their top of the line, but it's certainly not uh, the bottom. So it's, it's considered a good router. And it actually is really good performance. I've been happy with it. Um, there's some things I like about it, like it has eight uh, ethernet ports on the back side. So I can hook up my work laptop. I can hook up my personal computer, have a network attached storage, all that kind of stuff. I can, um, I have uh, enough ports on the back side of there. I don't need a switch, but uh, additionally, the range is really good. It, it's a dual band, so it's both 2.5 uh, gigahertz and f 5 gigahertz band. And it's enough to fill up um, uh, coverage for this house. This house is about 2,500 square feet of, um, of a footprint. It has a finished basement, um, and um, it has a, about one and a half story uh, design, so it has an upstairs. And then there's a barn, my main barn, that is about 100 feet away. And uh, it actually can cover all of that space without a problem um, with, with decent signal. Uh, one place I had a big issue was actually the basement. So um, I think the, um, the ceiling tiles down there, they have kind of a, a foil uh, backing on them. And I think that's blocking uh, the Wi-Fi signal down there. Um, and so in the corner of the the opposite corner of the house, the basement has no cell service and no Wi-Fi service, uh, which in today's world is, uh, you know, sacrilegious. And um, that's a guest suite down there. So that was kind of my initial thing was like, I really want to get Wi-Fi in the basement that's robust. Um, but then I also have a pond and another uh, barn um, that are both further away that um, a single router can't reach. So I knew I needed to go to a uh, multiple uh, router system and the uh, rise of the mesh systems uh, really is, is nice because your device just automatically switches. So 
That's when I looked into mesh systems. I picked the Asus one because I've been happy with their components and the AI mesh system allows you to pick higher grade um, access points as your nodes. If you go to um, any of the other um, you know, commercially available um, mesh systems, at least for home users, um, each of those node points aren't very powerful in of themselves. So uh, you need three of them just to cover a house this size, whereas um, really this one router can, can cover most of the area that they say they can cover. So uh, I actually bought this router used uh, for like a hundred bucks. I think it's about 250 new, give or take. And then um, three of my nodes are the, um, the RTAC68U, um, which are actually, um, I bought them used as T-Mobile hotspots and then uh, reflash the firmware uh, to make them back to a standard Asus uh, router. And then uh, my last node is a Asus Blue Cave, which is this little square, and that one's in the kitchen on the other side of the house. Um, so I'll, I'll go through each of those and, and show, you, um, show you those. But um, you know, each of the uh, 68 U's, 68 U's I bought for like $40 uh, used, so they were pretty cheap. Um, and then the uh, blue cave itself I bought new but it was a dill and it was like 90 bucks so um, you know maybe a little bit more expensive than um, like a Google mesh network or something like that but, but really not that much more uh, mainly because I bought them used and that's what's kind of cool about the AI mesh system is you can um, you can pick not any, any other router but most of their Asus routers will work with AI mesh so um, here's their web interface um, you know, and they also have an app and the app is pretty good. I'll, um, I'll kind of show that as well here. Okay. So now I'm just pulling up the Asus, uh, app on my phone. And, uh, the first thing you'll see is that it shows you a little map of the, um, of your network. And so you can see at, at the top, I have the internet coming into my main router, which is at 88U. And then you can see it splits off. And so... Um, each of those um, four nodes down there are um, other Asus routers. The one on the left is the, um, the basement and you see it, it has a little um, green circle that has a four on it. Uh, that means it has four devices connected to it. And then if you go straight down from the um, main router, that is the uh, barn. So um, that one has six routers on it and our six devices on it and then um, on the right side there's the blue cave and that blue cave has 15 devices and then you can see from there there's another 68u which that's the pond house and um, and that one has uh, just the one one device on down there so this is kind of a, a neat system it you know the the green lines they show you a couple things one it tells you that the uh, connection is good and then if you look a little bit, um, you can see that the line from the main router to the blue cave is more like a glowing green versus the, the other green lines. And um, that indicates that that's a wireless uh, backhaul. So, so there is no ethernet um, connection between that blue cave and this main router. It is done uh, wirelessly. So um, the other ones all have, or at least they think they have ethernet. So I'll, I'll get into that because um, only one, the, the barn, has a true Ethernet. The other ones have um, Ethernet over power line, and then the pond has a wireless bridge uh, from the house down to the pond. So uh, on this system, you can see the real-time traffic. Uh, you can also see all your devices here um, and which, um, which node they're connected to. You can also see um, what their signal quality is. So, you know, I can click on um, any of these devices, be it, you know, this Ecobee, and um, it will show me uh, down here at the bottom that the connection quality is great. You know, it has a minus 57 uh, dB uh, signal quality, and uh, this Ecobee is a 2.4 um, gig gigahertz uh, band. You can also click over uh, to the AI mesh node, and this um, will spell out on the far right side, it shows you uh, which ones are ethernet versus uh, wireless uh, connection to each other. And then um, 
if there was a firmware update, well, probably the nicest thing about the app besides just quickly checking to make sure all your nodes are, are online and working is um, it does a firmware check. So on this page, if there was a firmware update for any of these uh, routers, it would have a, a bright orange uh, header and it would um, let you uh, click update and it will update all of the nodes uh, at the same time. So that has been pretty slick. Uh, the other thing you can do with it is you can um, you know, control access and, and do uh, parental control stuff. Uh, I, I don't do any of that, but uh, that's all built into the app. So um, um, you, you can do a lot of that stuff. But the rest of the more advanced settings are on the, um, the actual web interface. And that's just like any standard uh, ASUS uh, router. Uh, what is nice about it is the AI mesh system allows you to have the center, um, or sorry, the central interface and so everything that you control here uh, on this router, it uh, propagates to all the others. So if you if you change the the channel naming or the the uh, um, actually which channel it's on or any of the settings, um, that gets applied to everything as a system. Uh, so that's um, that's kind of a nice thing about having this versus um, you know separate uh, router systems. But that's that's kind of true for all mesh uh, systems out there. Okay, so. Overall, um, I've been pretty happy with the AI mesh system. It did have some bugs you have to work out um, at the start where you have to mess with the settings. Uh, I had things like universal beam forming that um, would sometimes mess up uh, some devices. My wife's phone, uh, it was a Samsung S10, uh, for some reason would uh, drop off the Wi-Fi and wouldn't want to rejoin. So uh, I had to work out a little bit of those bugs at the start and that's the downside to the AI mesh system versus um, some of the other, um, you know, plug and play ones, but I've been happier with its ability to spread across this fast distance. Having the ability to do Ethernet backhaul uh, really helps with robustness, and um, you know, so it's it's worked for me. I I typically have at least 50 devices, uh, sometimes 60 or more devices on my network at any one time. Okay, so here's my main router. And you know, I do have uh, one of these cables, I don't even know it's one, um, but that goes directly to the barn. Um, another one of these cables, one of these white ones goes down here. And this is one of my ethernet over power line adapters. This one's a net gear um, and it's an older one. I actually had it at my old house, but um, it just takes this um, ethernet uh, signal and it converts it and is able to uh, send that signal over the um, the house power uh, wiring, you know, that's in the walls and already built in to your house. And then there's a corresponding uh, adapter that you plug into wherever you want um, the Ethernet to come out of, and um, that then converts it back to Ethernet uh, signal that you can plug into either a router, like I'm doing, or to a computer or, or game console or whatnot. And they work pretty well. They do have their limitations. Uh, the main limitations are um, ideally it's on the same circuit breaker. So, you know, you'll have a bunch of outlets typically on a single circuit breaker. It works best if they're on that same circuit. If it has to jump over to a different circuit breaker and a different circuit, I think every time it does that, it loses, I forget how much uh, signal quality. But um, um, so you have to play with it. So maybe not uh, exactly where you want to place it would work, but. Uh, I haven't had too much of a problem um, at this house other than um, like the pond, uh, for example, it's on a separate um, uh, complete breaker panel down um, at, at the house. And so uh, that doesn't work and it can't cross over to a whole new box. So something to keep in mind, but otherwise they, they, they do work. So I'll show where that one comes out and down in the basement. Okay guys, I'm now down in the basement and this is where the other side of the Ethernet over power line adapter uh, shows up. So uh, right down here you can see it and uh, there's some lights on it. You can see the three green lights. One of them shows that the device has power. Uh, the other one just gives you an indication of signal quality. Uh, that's the middle one and it'll be green if it's a good signal. Uh, it'll be yellow, medium, and um, 
red would be a low signal quality and that would affect your speed so you know like i said if it has to jump across multiple circuit breakers um, you might see a yellow or red signal or if you get interference and uh, i'll actually show I, I do get interference sometimes with the uh, the uh, the back bar and the far one but um coming out of that adapter is this blue ethernet cable and that just plugs into my node down here and so now this node um, gives me signal for all of the basement uh, without a problem. That's my office where I was just at and just to give you a idea of kind of scale uh, if I go over here this is now the kind of the opposite corner of the house and this is up here by Santa Claus is my blue cave uh, router so up here you can see that's the blue cave router and uh, over here uh, from that blue cave router um, I have an ethernet going up uh, to outside and I have my wireless bridge um, from the house down to the pond so uh, from this Asus uh, blue cave back to the main router that's all wireless so that's using uh, five um, gigahertz uh, channel to um, they call it backhaul so that that means all of the internet service that goes through um, that blue cave goes back to the main one wirelessly and that's my only node that is wireless but I haven't had a problem with it and that's one of the reasons why I um, I spent a little bit more money and bought a blue cave router for this one versus using another 68u router um, is I wanted one that had um, stronger power um, to make sure I had a good signal and, and, and I have um, it works well I was a little bit afraid it was going to be too far away but that was the easiest place for me to put um, an ethernet cable to get to the wireless bridge to go down the pond so that's why I picked it so um, I had to run a ethernet cable down the wall from the attic so I cl crawled up in the attic I ran an ethernet cable and put a jack on the wall here so let me show you that uh, that ethernet jack and so uh, that also um, uh, wireless bridge needs uh, power and it gets it as power over uh, ethernet not to be confused with ethernet over power line um, but so I plug that um, into there and um, that's how I get from this blue cave uh, to the wireless bridge that goes down to the pond. So I'm on the side of my house and up here, um, that little white rectangle, you can see that is one of my TP-Link wireless bridge devices. So I have that at the house. Um, just uh, inside that wall is the kitchen. I'll show you, um, you know, that's where one of my blue cave um, Asus nodes is at. If I walk down here from the house to the pond, this is where my wireless bridge is connected to go so go straight line of sight from there straight down here to my pond and um, this is a route that I didn't have an easy way to run an ethernet cable and the power is on a separate um, breaker so I'm not able to do uh, ethernet over power line so this was the the best solution I came up with I've actually been really happy with it it's really quite um, robust i haven't had any problems it hasn't even uh faulted out one time for me so over here you can see up there is the uh, tp link receiver for the pond house so i just ran that um you know through the uh through the side there into the attic and then it comes in here comes down th from the attic um and these guys are powered by a um um, they have power over Ethernet, so that's different than Ethernet over power line. So this is actually a uh, adapter that you give um, power and actually feeds power into the um, Ethernet cable up to that unit. And then uh, on the other port of that, it goes to one of my Asus um, nodes down here. So that node is what gives me uh, a Wi-Fi signal down here, and that is part of the mesh system. So um, my phone, when I walk from the house, automatically switches from, you know, the kitchen um, blue cave one uh, to this pond one as I walk down the sidewalk. So now I'm back up at the house by the garage. 
and I'm gonna walk down uh, to the basement walk outside uh, for reference up there is that uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi bridge and behind that wall is the blue cave um, access point and then down here in the basement I have another node and that was because I could not get Wi-Fi to go through the floor from the first floor to the basement so having a node down here really helped with that so that basement node is down there and that works for security cameras down here as well as uh, feeding the backyard I have my little hobbit house down here we have the uh, the kids playhouse and swing set down here as well so all this area gets good Wi-Fi signal now if I keep walking to the barn over here through this window facing us there's another uh, node and that is also part of the Asus mesh uh, system now this one has a direct cat 6 Ethernet cable from the barn right here from this corner um, through the ground and to the office which is over there by those AC units so this one I was I just ran um, 100 amp power and natural gas to the barn so I already had a trench dug so I just added a cat 6 Ethernet cable and uh, that plugs in directly to the main router so that's how this one gets it and then um, this one with it being right here outside the window um, obviously feeds the backyard um, tennis court and uh, all this stuff over here as well as the barn itself so if I go in there and look at it I'll show you how that setup works and uh, part in the barn it's a little bit of a mess I'm always doing projects so here you can see uh, this is the Ethernet cable coming in um, from the uh, outside goes directly into here and then over here I have um, one of my Ethernet over power line adapters so uh, this main breaker panel uh, feeds this barn but it also feeds the back barn so that back barn has its own um, wire that goes back to it uh, just to power lights and a couple outlets but this outlet right here is actually on that that breaker so um, this TP-Link um, Ethernet over power line adapter actually just runs on the exact same wire doesn't go through any breakers or anything like that so it actually has a good connection back there but so um, from this uh, node I have an Ethernet cable plugging into this guy and then the wire acts as the Ethernet cable comes out the other side in uh, that back barn so I'll go back to that one next so let's go back to that uh, back barn So back here I have security cameras and then I also have um, a Wi-Fi plug that I use for um, a block heater for my Bobcat. So I, I like to be able to turn that on and off myself. So in here we can see this one, like I said, it just has the one wire coming in from the, um, um, the first barn and it comes up and goes over here to uh, this outlet and then I have the corresponding uh, TP-Link converter. Now you notice there's no ethernet coming out of here and this is a kind of a unique one, that's why I bought it, is it has a little built-in um, Wi-Fi um, router into here. So this one does have a unique Wi-Fi um, uh, you know, network, so it's not part of the mesh network. Uh, I could add another Asus node here and make it as part of it but um, it was cheaper not to do that um, so I opted not to and and that hasn't been a problem but um, you, you could do that if you wanted to so uh, this works well it doesn't have nearly the uh, output power and range as the other Asus routers but I only need it for um, for this small building it's a I think 20 by 30 building so it, it uh, suffices for that uh, oh, this is doing it right now. So I want to show this. Um, sometimes the signal um, will turn yellow or red like it's doing right now. And what I found is that my chargers can sometimes cause it. So you can see it's back to green now. And that color means that um, the speed is dropped down. And so it could be because of interference or whatnot. And um, I found like my daughter's 36 volt ATV it has a charger that um, doesn't interfere with it if it's uh, charging the battery but once the battery's topped off and the charger's there um, 
is plugged in into both the outlet and the ATV, but it's not actually charging, it's just sitting there. Um, whatever signal or noise that it's creating, it backfeeds and messes up um, the ethernet um, service here. So, you know, here I have like one of these little trickle chargers to maintain some of my vehicles. And I think sometimes they, um, they do cause it to slow down, but never enough that it actually causes a problem. So I have uh, cameras that uh, play, um, you know, record all the time, don't have a problem with it. Uh, but something to note that you can get interference with, um, with some devices with Ethernet over power line. Okay guys, so I'm just going to do a uh, quick test to show you. So I'm going to turn off my mobile data. So now I'm just on Wi-Fi. And then I'm going to go to um, speed test app. And I'm going to test my internet speed here. Okay, yeah, so it says seven for download and 4.6 for upload. Um, so not earth shattering. That's really for um, for this um, Ethernet over power line. It's a fairly long run in the backyard, kind of uh, right by my uh, my barn. And we'll just do kind of a quick uh, speed test here. Now I can go, uh, you know, out here to the, uh, the back of the yard and show you the capability out there. So we'll show it out here. Um, if I do a retest. You can see it's still showing. It's a little bit slower. I'll, I'll keep going all the way as far as I can go here up to the tree line. So essentially the exact same um, same speed. It's uh, in fact I think it's slightly higher uh, than I got up right by the barn. So um, pretty happy with the um, the signal quality. Okay, so I got some deer out here, but right beside the deer you can see the pumpkins, and um, there I have a, a ring camera on that tree. Uh, and that gets uh, signal so from that uh, that deer and the pumpkin you can see up to the house um, you know it's probably I don't know what that is maybe a hundred feet but uh, that gets signal there and uh, doesn't bother anything but uh, hi little deer how's it going so uh, pretty cool I'm able to get Wi-Fi kind of out in the woods and I can uh, watch animals and whatnot with them. So now I'm outside of the pond house here. Here's the pond. And so with that uh, Wi-Fi access point in there, um, I'll show you my signal down here. So you can see I'm running, looks like a little bit slower than uh, I'm getting up right at the house, you know, 24 versus 25 or 26 megabits for download and four versus five or six for upload. Um, there you go. So pretty much the exact same speed I get to the house. And you know, what I think is that it does a little bit of a degradation. Um, it's certainly not capped out at 24. So. You know, if you had faster service i only have uh 25 rated service at my house if you had 100 megabits per second service you know i, I would think you would get um like 90 or something uh, it wouldn't drop all the way down to 24 so you just lose a little bit of uh signal quality as you go down there but uh i couldn't ask for anything better as far as a uh no hassle way to get wi-fi from a, a far distance they they rate this tp uh, wireless bridge for like 15 kilometers um, that's line of sight obviously I think that's not realistic um, but certainly I think uh, anyone trying to send it from one building to another building on their property so long as you have decent line of sight 
uh, it certainly seems capable of doing it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth review of my Wi-Fi network. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to add them as a comment down below, and I will answer them. And, you know, if you have any ideas uh, for some more videos uh, that you'd like to see about this, just let me know, and um, I'll add it to the list.